everybody. I am doing a 30 minute soul journey session for a client. This is actually a follow up session. So I'm going to put a link to the previous session in the description. And this session is the goals are really profound, really good goals. And we're going to be exploring um, for this client looking for uh, blocks, removing any type of density that is hindering the flow of physical and financial support and abundance. And um, this client has mentioned how they attract those um, who heal in their presence. And there's a joy to being that presence for others, but a feeling of lack in having that for themselves. And I really relate to um, that type of feeling. And so I'm going to go ahead and relax here and then get connected and we'll see what, what comes up, okay? All right. Okay. Okay. There's several things. First off, um, there's a really, there's a jam, a thick jam in the throat here. And there's um, one in the third eye. It's a little bit heavy on the lungs, a little harder to breathe. And I feel like I'm at a distance. I'm seeing two scenes. One is the feeling of these sort of energy jams, all right? But the other is feeling the energy jams while simultaneously being slightly disconnected from the self. And <clears throat> I see a version of you in, in gray. This is quite a peaceful distance. And it's like you're kind of on a mountain range. And there is no uh, temperature, there's no hot, no cold, there's no nothing growing, but there's no decay. So there's no no growth, no decay. Um, so it's kind of a neutral place to be. And you're standing here at the top of this mountain range and you're sort of just gazing across. But you're gazing across um, in a slightly different direction than seeing into the person that you are feeling or being, the human and I need to sync up between this disconnected part of yourself and the part of you that is actually presently experiencing. This is really a big deal. There's a wall between these two worlds. There's a big old wall. And I start to see both become somehow a painting picture man this is getting really really difficult because it's almost like energy is being pulled from the back of my head and it's a bit disorienting and exhausting on my mind and I feel tired and my eyes kind of look downward they close slightly and there's a sadness but there's a strange something here um, regarding the third eye and it's like a black coin uh, black coin is here there's a white dove that quickly um, sort of reveals itself perched on a shoulder. Then I see wings flapping away, but the dove never leaves the shoulder. The white dove. And the dove remains on the shoulder. And I start to see a, a little, what is like a chain connected to the dove's uh, ankle and then the shoulder to the shoulder. So the dove then will always remain perched there. But the dove accepts that and it has no desire to fly free anymore. It just desires to be a guide. It desires to be this one perched here as though this is its place. This is its purpose. But if this is truly its place and its purpose, then why would it be chained to it? That is imprisonment. That is not what is owning your own essence and being free to be that essence, to be that support. It's almost like a little voice, um, the angelic voice um, that whispers into the ear. It's like this white dove represents that, but yet it is forced to be that. But it also finds contentment in it as well. But yet it should never be a forced thing. There should be no chain there if it is satisfied, truly. 
you have some very uh, meaningful water energy, but the water has been grayed out. And I feel that a lot of the message flows through water between this image of disconnect and the neutral zone um, flowing through, then the human flowing through this white dove. They're just sort of flowing um, in between, around, and interconnected to each other like stones in the river, but also connected to the river. The dove shows me itself again, and it will not fly away, but I see behind its eyes that it is sad. I see, um, what is a child that will always be there for a parent that is dependent on the child to take care of them? And I don't know if the parent is necessarily a disabled persona, or if it just is emotionally um, insecure. And now the child must... Uh, sort of support and help the parent with that emotional insecurity and now becomes the parent becomes dependent on the child therefore the parent then is not working on themselves they just need the child then to be their crutch so they don't have to deal with their own insecurities and then the child then does become that crutch without realizing it but the child then feels good because it is helping the parent although it is being manipulated Really, the parent still needs to let go of the child. Let that white dove be set free. That is a very insecure, manipulative thing. And now the dove feels that it is placed as correct and that it is doing angelic work, but really it is being manipulated. <sighs> this is a hard, hard message here. It's getting a little bit more serious, a little bit harder to digest. It's almost like there's some things that that you ha can't see. You literally cannot see. Because it's almost like it's quite certain that it is a certain way when it is a, a manipulated idea. It's an, it's an illusion that feels real. It really is real then, right? But it somehow was a man manipulation, a ripple in the still pond. You see? And that's why there's a black coin over the third eye because it's not able to see what it is missing. It can't even tell because there's a manipulation to it. You are behaving as this white dove. You're the crutch for people that can't. It's like, this is hard and it makes me sad. So, okay, just a second. It's really intense in the stomach right now. It's really like um, clenched tight, okay? and it's a it's a lot of reaction from you and anger and it's kind of creating a disarray in the in the mind like the frequencies of the mind are kind of um, creating a lot of um, crackle and sound here and anger so you're just doing this right now okay and the throat is still tight, but it's starting to get softer or loosen up a little bit. And the mind is a bit angry. And this is a burnt piece. If something is burnt, that's why it's black. Ah, I'm going to ask you a question. What if you are no longer needed? So if you're no longer needed, then what is your purpose to need yourself, right? There's something here where we are going to have to turn things inside out. It is not you that is needed. It is you that needs yourself. And those that are flocking towards you are like this manipulative frequency. It creates joy to help others, but really you're just more of a crutch than anything. And you're just the chained white dove. But it's strange because the white dove is starting to transform into a white pigeon. So it's sort of like immaculate um, nature. You know, the white dove has sort of an immaculate, holy uh, sort of semblance to it. Where the white pigeon is just sort of like... A, a lesser species, you know? <laughs> it's not the majestic pigeon. Although pigeons do have 
quite powerful personas if you want to look into them more. But the average person, it's just a pigeon pooping on the um, window, uh, the outside of the window, you know, it's like those pigeon poops <laughs> everywhere, making all that pigeon noise. And What does the pigeon mean now? Why did it do that? So I see, they show me that the transition from being what is like the Immaculate White Dove that is chained isn't necessarily the Immaculate White Dove, it's a slave, isn't it? Now the transition feels like a pigeon, a lesser value. But why would it feel like a lesser value to start needing yourself now? Instead of the purpose being there for those, those needy others, those who need you, now it is time for you to need yourself to truly know what freedom is all about. This is confusing to you because it confuses your idea of being sort of that leader of love, that holy voice, because that's what it is. I mean, you're helping people. There's something in the balance here that is more like slavery than it is the angel that is coming. Um, it's different. There's something quite different here in the way that it is being portrayed. And even to talk about it, it jams my throat up and it makes me feel really tight and um, like disagreeable. Like I'm becoming um, a board of wood. Um, <sighs> stiff. Not flexible. Tighter. This would be really, really, really hard for you to identify if you didn't have someone who could help you see it. <sighs> I'm just going to pull a part of you, your consciousness out and then have you take a look at the scene with me and have you look at the coin in your third eye and... Hmm. You show me the version of you with the coin. It's just like you became still, not even moving. It's like everything has stopped. You're, we're outside of all these images and all the images have completely stopped. The disconnected version of you on the you know, the top of that uh, mountain ridge, the, the white dove with the chain, the, um, you know, back to the human and, and all these different um, energetic uh, responses. And I see you looking at this and it's in a pool of, of what is frozen water. So it's still, but it's not a still pond. It's frozen. So it's stuck. There's something about you and water because there's a longing for things to flow again and it hasn't been flowing, which makes sense about the, the abundance, right? The physical, the physical support, the financial support. Um, there's, there's, it's literally frozen. It's really literally stopped. Um, so when it comes to flow, m water is a really good representation of flow and um, it's showing me that the flow of the water is completely stopped now. And before... We got to this part, it was in a manipulated, a manipulated illusionary state. It had always been stopped. It had always been frozen. And it was frozen because of this. So we're working our way towards flow again here, okay? So the first part of the session is to reveal this, okay? So let's see what comes next. Okay, let me see. You touch the ice and it burns your hand. It's so cold, it literally, it instantaneously burns your hand. It is that cold. That's what it's like. And it feels like there's no hope of ever melting ice this cold. You know, I had a weird thought come to mind. Just a weird thought, okay? that the ice that gets colder and colder and colder and colder and colder becomes something else, becomes different. It's like water that, you know, ice that gets hotter turns to water, um, which, you know, then boils and turns to steam, right? Um, 
and just becomes part of the air. But what about um, water, you know, that turns to ice and then the ice gets so cold? Is that cold fusion? I, I don't know. I'm just like, but I saw ice that gets so cold, it turns into its own version of steam in a way. <laughs> but it's like ridiculously cold and it creates some sort of weird um, reactions. Like some some sort of, some mad scientist would understand this. <laughs> but maybe the, the, that's what it was shown in this image. It gets so cold that we go the opposite way with it. Instead of heating things up, we make things colder in order to break it apart and for it to become a different, um, something even different still. Something we didn't think was possible. That ice could ever become anything but ice. But if it could get cold enough, it could actually become different. It could become transformed into something even different than ice. That water can go through all these transformations just like you. And for some reason, we need the transformation to take us into a zone we've never even explored. It's like we're adventurers of the water. And this time we are exploring a different direction where we all want to get hotter and turn to steam, things to speed up and to become ascended kind of thing. We're going to become ascended by making things colder and even colder still until some sort of miraculous event takes place and, and ice becomes a different a different property of itself like water becomes something different than even ice <laughs> so it's like going into a realm or a zone of the unknown and it's ridiculously exciting it's ridiculously different and its impact is something so substantial we can't even fathom it so it's really really good so you're sort of looking at me like Wow, so I'm not meant to heat this ice up for it to melt, for it to turn to what I would predict would be the right direction. I would predict the right direction would be to warm the ice up for it to melt, turn to water, boil the water, turn to steam. So things can get moving, can get active, can get going again. Um, but really, I just need to make things colder. And then something unknown will happen and it'll be even better than things turning into steam. Like things speeding up and boiling and turning into steam. Like it'll be even better than that. Things will flow even better by making it colder. Like how, how is that possible? It's like you're actually really intrigued by this idea. That's what they're showing me. That you're going to go in a direction you did not anticipate. <laughs> and it's going to be like things are getting colder and you're going into an unknown zone where, where the same should just happen it should just stay the same but really it transforms into something you never thought possible and it's it's they're showing me that everything that you've participated in has been exactly the right um pathway for you so don't take the beginning of this journey don't take that um and make yourself feel low about it by any means make yourself feel proud of you Make yourself feel proud of you about it because you're that kind of loving person. It doesn't matter if if you end up becoming the crutch for another. You love people that much. And that's why the bird was happy to stay. Because it loves that much. But it does need to see the chain. Um, it does need to see that it is um, there is an imprisonment to the behavior. But it was perfect. It was everything it needed to be to get to this point to now see the ice. But it's going to get a lot colder. But that's going to create some some sort of unknown event with water. That water that gets so cold it turns into something else. It's something like this. Um, and it's going to be mind-blowing and amazing. You could have only reached this point if you would have started at point A to reach this point B. It had to be everything just like this. Everything. You wouldn't want it to be any other way. You've done everything right somehow um, it's starting to get you moving again. And I start to see um, this pond that became frozen, right? Um, it's still in what is the state of transformation, but there's movement inside the transformation. Um, it's like uh, there's movement inside the ice and it's transforming. So the part that's in this neutral zone is starting to like pack their bags and is ready now to participate in life again. And the part that has been going through this strange, um, you know, these energy, certain specific energy blocks associated with all of this is about to experience and breathe and feel and pr participate in a new way. And it's going to feel new as well. And the dove can be whatever that dove wants to be because it's that dove's life. And I don't see the chain on there anymore. But I see you. It's like a different understanding about needs. A different understanding about what the dove needs to be the dove in the first place. 
Now, whether it's a dove or it's a pigeon, it doesn't matter because it's life, right? It's life force energy. That's what makes it immaculate. That's what makes it sacred. And there's needs like food, like nurture, love, support, a warm roof over your head, like these basics, but they can be so much more special than that, like a coziness, like a self-love that's long overdue. And it gets a lot warmer. <laughs> How odd we're talking about temperatures. As things get colder, they get warmer. <laughs> it's like uh, it gets so cold it turns into its own weird steam. I don't know. There's uh, something strange about it. But it does feel so much warmer. I feel warm fire and a coziness and a hot cup of soup or tea or coffee or something of this nature. Something that feels... Like it is, um, it's like, it's just right. It feels just right and it feels cozy and kind to you. It's taking care of you. But it's almost like not you taking care of you, but it's something warmer. I see it comes from the air itself, that there's an energy in the air that has given this hot fire to you, this like this cozy feeling, this um, cup of soup or whatever it might be, this moment. It comes from the air that gives to you these warm and comforting needs. And it's you that is the one sitting on the sofa now being tended to by some immaculate invisible force taking care of you. But you had to see this, you had to know about this for the energies to shift, for that wall to just completely vanish as though it never was there in the first place. And for now, things to move in a different direction. And deep down inside, you want this. So I'm going to give this to you, okay? So your deep down inside part of you is saying, yes, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you're in um, what is an extravagant, it, it, this is literally what it looks like. This is what comes. Okay, so it's like an extravagant hotel, <laughs> but you're like the only one there. And there's all this like, I don't know, this antique furniture, but it's, it's like would only be owned by a queen, <laughs> you know, it'd be in a palace or something. And it's so well maintained. And there's people who clean. You don't clean anything. There's all these like delicate and extraordinary little teacups. You know, they're like, everything is just super exquisite. And you don't have to wash any of these dishes. You don't even have to prepare the tea. You don't have to dust anything. Um, and there, and it just sort of comes to you. It just, you, all you have to do is relax and then just let the receiving happen. And I just see you be being waited on um, by the universe, basically. You are the queen and the universe is tending to you now as your servant. The universe is your servant and you are the queen. <laughs> you are the goddess figure. Like You are that um, almighty energy that the universe is taking care of, is tending to you this time. And um, the universe shows me that it is it is um, going to wash your dishes. It will make your tea. It will <laughs> um, it will shine your shoes. It will do everything for you. But before you were trying to be this universe for everybody else, you were trying to be this universe for them. And all along, that they're learning to find themselves as the god and goddess of their own universe. To let the universe wait on them. But you have to go through the process, the rigmarole of that type of learning to be able to be in that place of receiving. Because sometimes we need permission to know that it's okay to receive. Or we need permission to forgive ourselves. Or we need permission to, um, you know, be different ways that we need to be to let go of that wound. To let go of that insecurity, you know. And so instead of you letting the universe teach them the lessons, they come to you as the universe that will give to them what they need. But there's some type of imbalance associated with it. I can't, I can't explain it any more than this. I'll let you ponder it. 
but they keep showing me you in this like immaculate hotel of extraordinariness and you're just in this great room and there's all this love that is tending to you at every moment and you're smiling and you're just, I mean, they're doing your nails. They're doing like, everything is happening here. <laughs> it's great. It's great. You don't have to trim the shrubs. You, you just, you don't even have to plant the seeds. Like there's, there's gardeners. There's like, there's the pool boys. There's like the everything going on here. Like you, all you do is just enjoy. That's it. That's all you do is just enjoy. <laughs> That's what this, ho this like super great hotel is all about is, it's you come visit this hotel, you just relax, and then you let the universe um, do everything else for you. It's, it's wonderful. So I'm letting this happen, and I'm letting this part of you that just really deeply wants this um, to have this experience right now. It should, it's really helping to, um, oh man, you are really opening up here. Boy, you were closed down. You were closed for business. I mean, you were straight up closed for business. But you're still acting like you weren't. Wow. You were so ready for this. This may seem a little strange, but they're showing me another important thing that um, needs to happen for you. It's a bit sad. Um, so I see that... Um, I see what is an elderly woman who cannot wash herself anymore, who cannot... Um, wipe herself who cannot um, even stand really and um, so you have a part of yourself that is like this okay and um, so I am picking her up and I am taking her to the bathroom and I'm helping her with her basic needs and I'm picking her up and I am helping her into the tub and I'm washing her body and I'm washing her hair and I'm helping her to feel beautiful again and um, she starts to cry. <sighs> because when you can't take care of yourself anymore, you feel dirty. You feel decayed. You feel rot. And to have someone just simply help you go to the bathroom, someone to simply help you into the tub, it's like, it's more special than you could imagine. And it's more precious than all the gold in the world. Something about this is really, really important for you. To have this, you have this part of you inside that really needed this. And I'm just still doing this here. I'm giving you your strength back. That's another part of this message. Because the more I continue to wash you, and the more you regain, what is that joy? It's a simple joy, but boy, is it powerful. When you haven't, it, I mean, this part of you literally says, I haven't been able to go to take myself to the bathroom or bathe myself in years. And I have been sitting in my own stinky poop. And, you know, it, and I've been sitting like this for so many years and nobody has come to bathe me. Nobody has come to help me. And um, it's like the first time of being bathed in like years. You can't imagine how absolute the gratitude, the, the sparkle that is uh, returning to you just from this sheer act. This simple act. You're already um, strong enough to stand in the tub now. And you're already strong enough to take um, a towel off the towel rack. There's something strange though here because you are standing, you are you're becoming so strong. You're all you're almost turning I mean you're turning into like a man made out of metal. <laughs> That's what, kind of what it looks like. You your your legs are becoming like metal legs and then you're starting to look like a man made out of metal and you're like a terminator or something. Like you are a strong strong being. You are like a very strong being. <sighs> 
And there's a male energy that is coming forward here with super hardcore strength. All you needed was just someone to tend to you just a little bit. And it's like you just um, were refueled with a, like supersonic energy, like supersonic. Oh, I, got, I can do this for another 50 years, you know? <laughs> like you just needed a little bit of love and it goes a long way with you. That's really cool. That's a really cool thing about you. Huh. Okay, let me see what else happens here. Something about the heart. You haven't stepped out of the tub, but you look like a man, like a strong, ridiculously sh like metal, strong metal man. Uh, hold on a second here. <sighs> there's just like a, there's a scent, there's just an anger, there's a sensitivity, there's a, there's like some sort, there's a lot of different reactions happening. Uh, it's like uh, they can't really make up their mind because there's just so many just like like feelings happening. They're all colliding and they're all happening together as like one woven event, but it's all like really intense as you look at this part of yourself. And you don't even know what to make of it. You don't even know what to gather of this, but you know this is true. This is real somehow. You don't even know how to be that, but you want to be that. You want that strength. You want that. You're confused. You're standing in the doorway watching all of this happen. Your, your mouth is like uh, open. And you want to return to an old part of yourself that was much stronger. But you don't feel like you are allowed to. You don't feel like you can. Just a moment here. This man is now talking to you. You know what's interesting? You had mentioned Cryon in your request. That, um, you had watched that recent video that I had made. and um, That Cryon means a lot to you. And I know that it's like cry out of magnetic service that I you can see it kind of appear as like a metallic man. So I keep I starting to think of cry on here as I'm looking at this metal man and um, I see him stepping out and instead of you having to come in to try to find the strength in order to be this strong persona of yourself, it's like the strong persona of yourself is coming to help you become strong again. But it also is um, like Cryon um, is saying that he loves you and that he, he will help you become strong again too. It's like trying to help you understand that this isn't just you having to hold the whole world on your shoulders. That we help each other. A one little dove can't heal the planet. You know? You need uh, other little doves and, and so much more than that. We need the whole world. You um, expect too much out of yourself, too. <sighs> Allow it to happen for you because it is meant for you. This, again, is allowing the universe to be your servant. And the universe will gladly come to you if you allow it. But you have to allow it. You don't get to be the universe you have to be who you are and let the universe then be there for you. There's some new language that you're going to learn. And I, I see Cryon is actually, it's, it looks like little, it's like here's a circle and then the circle disappears and it turns into a dot and then an exclamation point. And then like, it just turns into all these different shapes, but it's like one on top of another on top of another. And it's like speaking a new language. And it's like, um, it's like a an upgrade, like an energy upgrade or download, and it's um it's a it's a, like a light language or something, but it doesn't say it's light language. It just shows me that you are absorbing or learning a new language, and it's almost like you know this language because it's your eyes are opening, like your eyes are open as Cryon literally is showing you this language right in front of your face, and you're watching it. And you're, you're like, yes, 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 yes. And it's all coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in very quickly through your eyes. It's actually coming through your eyes. And it, it's also stimulating your third eye. And it seems like there's some activations going on at night while you're sleeping. You may or may not know about it, but it, it almost feels like you, 
you may be aware of it. You may be aware of messages coming to you in the middle of the night. Maybe dream messages, but it feels like even waking up and hearing like a message and falling right back asleep. And it only took like 60 seconds to receive that and then you just fell back asleep. And then the next day around lunchtime, you're like, oh yeah, I woke up. I, something weird happened and then I fell back asleep. It's kind of like that. You're being, I mean, you are being prepped or prepared like you are downloading some very important wisdom here. And it's going to be like everything that has ever been. It's going to be a revolving door to something it's never been, but always was meant to be and always felt like it would be like this. <laughs> That's kind of what it's, it's what it's showing itself to me as. And I don't feel the burden of of like that longing um, for the longing. I mean, it's almost it's just such a longing, a strong longing for the abundance, the, the physical um, support, financial support. Um, I don't feel that um, because it already feels like you are being supported in a way that you weren't able to access it before, feel it before. And it seems as though you're going to be making some changes to, again, bring it back to yourself. What is it you need? What are your needs? Making other people happy is um, a blessing, is a joy. It's it's wonderful, especially for your nature. But there's something that comes back to don't let that overshadow your needs because your needs are really important. <sighs> okay, that's all I can share. <laughs> super, super cool message. And thank you so much. It's a pleasure to connect with you again today, and thank you for sharing. Um, this was a fantastic message, absolutely fantastic. I, I feel like I've, I've even learned a lot myself. <sighs> okay, and uh, for those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, thank you all, and I hope you all have a great day.